What's up everyone, my name is Alex, I'm one of the co-founders of MyInvestingClub.com and I want to let you guys know about something special we're doing for our viewers on YouTube. So the most common question we get asked is, you know, how do I start day trading? So what me and my mentor Bao did is we created a free two-hour mentorship course for the brand new trader. It's going to be available at MyInvestingClub.co, the link is going to be right here. This is a free webinar that reveals our 12 secrets that every single brand new day trader should know before they start. I also wanna let you guys know about something that's very unique to MIC. So if you have any questions about trading or you're curious about trading or you don't know if MIC is the right fit for you, now you can text our head mentor, Tosh, whose number is gonna be right here, and he'll answer all the questions that you have in less than 24 hours. Thank you and enjoy the video. What's up everyone, uh, I just wanted to make a weekly video for you guys. I have a cool kind of topic, or not cool, but just a different topic this time around. I wanted to talk about what I've been kind of calling opportunity cost. And what I mean by that is, you know, in trading, uh, it's like a known thing that, you know, if you, like in a lighter terms, you know, if you blow your load too early, you end up missing the, the move that you wanted. And so something I was struggling with this week, you know, the market has been providing such good opportunities lately and range and like i've just been luckily enough nailing a lot of them and trading well and then last week came around the end of last week and i was just early all the time because i think i got into this mindset of like i couldn't lose um and even as i was trading a little sloppy like even with big size like i just was kind of getting out of everything and like things were paying out right because like even on a stock like this like this is um i know you know if you were even a little early at 11 you know and you gave yourself the range you know you could have made you know dollar a share plus whatever but kind of what ended up happening to me last week was i just was so anxious at the open to nail everything because i saw so much so many people banking like all the time so i just like felt like i had to be a part of it so um something i'm going to work on going into next week i actually have said i'm taking like a, a solid month off of even looking at like twitter or any of that and i'm just going to focus on MIC and focus on you guys and myself in the chat and posting my progress here because you know I think as traders especially when everyone's doing so well you know you start to get this idea of like I don't want to say jealousy but that's kind of what it is it's like you just see these people banking and like as much as you want to I've been doing this a long time and as much as you want to say like oh you know I'm doing well too and like you know good for that guy whatever it's hard sometimes this competitiveness and this feeling that you need to do better but Again, just because you see someone making five, ten thousand dollars a day does not mean that you're there. You know, you can't compare your chapter one to their chapter thirty, like you know, Bell always says. So you know, as you know, going into next week, just really sticking to my my niche and staying in my lane. So let's talk about these tr trades and like what I mean by opportunity cost. So so in the morning, I have a rule. You know, like I usually like when a stock tanks at open, like SSR or not, like you know, if I'm going to scalp VWAP right here. I'm using no more than my 30% size because my thesis is like, it just didn't give you the move. You, you know, we want meat on the bone. So we would have wanted this thing to push for you to, you know, use your 30% and then add as it confirms. Um, but what happened here was I just, you know, I attacked VWAP, which is fine. You know, it tanked at the open. I attacked VWAP. Um, I think it tanked, you know, 30, 40 cents. And I'm like, okay, that's a good tank. So I'm going to short VWAP, right? But 99% of the time, I stop out on the break of intraday high. So like right here. So I was short with a 1090s average. You know, intraday high was like 11. So I would have taken like a, a less than 10 cent loss on, on starter size, right? Which would have been fine because then I would have been patient enough. I would have been down nothing, you know, like barely, you know, over a hundred dollars. And I would have been able to sit through this and wait for my, for my entry, right? Which was like, usually on stocks like I know, like I always wait for these stuff moves um, or these rejections off highs and give you that bounce to, to get in risking, you know, this line or whatever. Um, but what happened was I didn't stop out, you know, and I, I didn't put a hard stop in. So then I said, okay, you know, now it's at this line, maybe I'll add. And I added a little bit bigger, which now, because I was 30% here, I was bigger here, 50% maybe. So by the time it kept going, you know, I had to take the loss as it broke kind of this, this resistance right here. So, you know, it just shows that like, you know, if you don't follow your same process every day, you know, like the odds are you're going to lose. And the one time you don't, you get lucky. It creates a bad habit, right? Like this was a clear cut reason to stop out. It reclaimed VWAP on a little bit of elevated volume, you know, broke intraday high and broke all these resistances, right? So, you know, this stop out even was, was okay, but I was more than my 30% size on the front side of the mood move. I didn't stop out at the levels I really should have. So, you know, it's just frustrating to see. And I want to give you another example. 
of um, of that. So CAPR. This is a stock that you know I I'm not mad about this trade necessarily, but I want to get into exhaustion. So so the way my thought in the morning was you know there's resistance at the 720s and then like you know 750 whole half dollar and then eight were, were my thoughts right. I no way in hell like it just goes to show like. No matter how long you do this, like you're never gonna know everything because no way in hell I wouldn't have bet any amount of money this was going to nine. Looking back, I realized that it really was kind of like a volume trap where it traded so much volume in the past few days. So, you know, people still had to get out so squeezes could go further. You know, and the problem is my niche is between two and five dollars on stocks between two and five, and anything over that, I just always, always, always have to remember that there is range that you have to account for, right? So, and you know, look at how much money there is from nine to 750, it's a dollar 50. So, you know, using even a thousand shares, which is nothing, that's $1,500, right? So you gotta account for the range and play the range, like what Bao does, right? Whereas like, you know, I'm trying to play, you know, this range still using, you know, three or 4,000 shares. So like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking for this home run idea, but you know, I'm forgetting that, you know, these things like you know if you have 20 30 cent risk it, it can go 20 30 cents like nothing so what happened in the morning was you know i made the, i shorted the push 720 750 had like a 730s average added on the reject uh so now i'm still sitting in the 730s you know i covered into a lot into vwap because i just felt it did it wasn't breaking down went up you know i had my stop kind of above this level here um, right in there and I added as it looked like it made that lower high so I'm like, I'm like okay this trade's gonna work this is gonna break down view up and I'm gonna kind of look to cover down in the 650s but then it looked up it, it held and I so I, was, I said that's weird like that's not normal and then I saw this you know higher low and I'm like I'm getting contradicting signals so my thought is I'm usually just gonna get flat when that happens so as I was looking to get flat you know we just got this push um, and I stopped out on the break of this lower high. So the problem is I just exhausted myself. Like I ended up like pretty much break even on the trade or maybe I was even a tiny bit green. Um, I, this was the day I also lost an INO, so I was like red on the day. But like at this point I was like so flustered. I was so flustered that, that I just had kind of worked myself on this loss. And, and I don't know, maybe from taking the loss on INO, I was mentally exhausted. So I missed this whole move because I just had to get out of here. You know, I just felt like like stressed and like, and in reality, like I know, like we probably would've got this top off 870. I probably would've tried that, you know, and and let me kind of show you guys, you know, you know, as I spent all of Friday, like pretty, pretty annoyed. Um, I'm taking a bunch of, I'm told you I'm not doing Twitter. I just need to use my pictures here. Like when I go back and look at my edge, this is what, what, what I notice, right? Look at this, when, when the stock is under VWAP, Right. The only time that I actually really like shorting front side is two scenarios or not even front side, just like kind of shorting like into strength is in two scenarios. So either when the stock is broken under VWAP pre-market and it's given you these levels to play off of, you know, so now you have VWAP as your risk. You know, that's why I like stopping out of VWAP because, you know, VWAP is usually coupled with a line close to it. And that gives you that that edge. You know, look at this, you know, it was under VWAP, got to short to strength and cut in short as it was breaking down. Like, look at that dollar range, right? You know, that's that's my edge is like, you know, when a stock's broken down, you know, shorting into what was already caused resistance. The only other time that I like to short into strength is, and this is a this is a tricky one. See, these are all like shorting into strength, but with predetermined lines, you know, like I'm like, I'm just throwing starters out at the predetermined levels to get in. You know, I did that on, on SEPA right? Predetermined 440 line. So it gave me that confidence uh, to play it because obviously, you know, everyone's chasing to break this line. And as it was rejecting, you can get in. Another example of, of where edge is, is if you look at SEPA, I mean, look at this, like if you avoided all of this nonsense right in here, right? Like this guessing the top or whatever, look at what it broke under VWAP. It broke under VWAP on volume and you, you had from 380 to 340. That's 40 cents of clear backside trading. And you're not guessing where to cover. Look at, you have your levels. There's support at three, like 50, and then support down here. So, you know, these levels, everything's drawn out for you, you know, and just having that patience to wait. Uh, another example is this, right? I know the other day, you know, when it broke under VWAP, I took that, that starter and was shorting, just using VWAP as my guide, right? And look at how it worked. You know, I had from, you know, 1230s, 1220s, got to cover in the low 12s, and I ended up losing on this, but I lost, I think, well, because I was looking for the first red day. I stopped out when it reclaimed, like, very well. So, so I'm noticing as time goes on, it's like, you know, it's funny, you hear people tell you this, 
so constantly. Like, my edge is just so much revolved around waiting for the VWAP break. You know, and I don't mind shorting frontside because I think I'm comfortable identifying when, you know, it's okay to. But again, if you're shorting frontside, you have to, have to stick to the 30% rule because it's not worth taking those mental exhaustion paper cuts. Yeah, you know, if you're small size and you're taking these small cuts, it's, it's, it's okay, you know. But even then, you know, like what I did over the weekend is I printed out all of my, my charts that I just showed you. And then I printed out um, my trades that I've made the most money on, right? And it just shows, like, if you can just be patient and wait for your desired entry and, like, where you have the most edge, you know, the odds are in your favor. And, like, that's when it's not afraid, like, it's not scary to use bigger size. Like I said, going into next week, I'm going to focus on not exhausting myself early on and just sitting tight and waiting for that that desired uh, entry. And then, so I'll let you know how that goes. I'm going to recap my trades next week. So enjoy the rest of your day, guys. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button here. We do our best to post a new video every single day. If you have any questions about MIC or any general trading questions, please text Tosh using the number here. Also, stay up to date by watching some of our most recent videos right over here.